Well, it is a great pleasure and honor to be here and to have the opportunity to introduce my dear friend and colleague, Professor Jane Ginsburg. I've known Jane frighteningly for almost 30 years. Uh, when I followed her to a small boutique uh, IP law firm in New York and then into academia where she was a mentor and supporter and became a very close friend. I have watched with admiration and some pride as she became the legendary global figure in the copyright world that she is today. Uh, in a word, she is the international copyright expert renowned and respected and consulted around the world. And this is true of her work in the trademark area as well. And I do have to say you've heard a lot already, her sheer energy is a complete marvel. Uh, and if you look at her long list of accomplishments, it is hard to believe that she is still as young as I am. <laughs> so first of all, as a scholar, as you've heard, her output has been prolific, but I will add, it's been prolific in both English and French, not something that many American scholars can claim. Uh, she has published more than 30 books and book chapters, well over 100 articles, plus numerous columns. And if you read her CV, you will see a very long list of honorary lectures, awards, fellowships, editorials, editorial boards and advisory boards, and all extremely well deserved. But as you've gotten a sense of already from the brief clip, Jane also finds time for other things. She finds time for music, for theater, for friends and for family, and to exercise her skills as a chef. Now I have to say that invitations to the uh, salon of Jane and George's apartment where one finds fine food and wine in abundance, uh, fascinating conversation, and very frequently chamber music performances uh, are greatly prized, certainly by me, and I know by others as well. So you may ask, how does she do it all? And I suspect that she doesn't sleep. <laughs> I'll never forget one evening in New York when Jane attended a concert given by my choir then joined me for a very late dinner with plenty of wine, and then at midnight as we parted, announced that she was going home to finish an article before she left for France the next day. <laughs> now, I don't know about the rest of you, but I know I can never hope to match uh, that. But more than the energy are the qualities that distinguish all of her output, and I was thinking about what those were, and I came up with a list. First of all, an exceptional breadth and depth of knowledge that follows from her uh, profound curiosity and her following up on that curiosity. Incisive analytical thinking. Creativity in exploring new angles and new approaches to every issue. Lucid and elegant means of expression of her ideas. An unflagging determination and rigor as a researcher. And last but not least, a real passion for authorship and for creativity and belief in copyright uh, truly as a calling. As you've gotten a sense from listening to her students uh, in the clip, Jane is also a brilliant and an inspiring teacher. She is a Pied Piper to her students, uh, whom she keeps ties to over decades and over oceans. Uh, they're a very impressive global network of IP professionals who compete to host Jane on her travels, and many of whom have become her collaborators as well as her protégés. So all of these achievements have found her welcoming academic homes, if not honorary citizenships, uh, not only in New York, but also in the finest universities of Paris, Cambridge, and Rome, uh, not to mention recently Australia and New Zealand. Uh, so I cannot personally think of anyone more deserving of this award, and I congratulate Chips on her selection.
Thank you. This, this is really overwhelming. Uh, and I, I'm humbled to know that the real reason for getting this award is conviviality and cocktail parties. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess I'll just have to continue that. Uh, it is an immense honor to participate in celebrating the 10th anniversary of this very inspiring organization dedicated to the advancement of women in intellectual property uh, and in technology. And I thought that I would just reflect extremely briefly uh, on women in IP, because when I started uh, in uh, academia over 25 years ago now, uh, IP was one of the very few areas in which women could be found, both uh, in practice and in, in academia. Now, that may be in part because at the time, uh, IP and particularly copyright were considered rather marginal to the legal endeavor. Uh, real lawyers did M&A uh, and uh, people who did copyright probably wanted to be novelists uh, uh, or other kinds of creative folk. I, I might just uh, uh, open a parenthesis by, by saying that the chamber music to which Shira referred included herself. She's an excellent soprano, and so she and, and my, my husband, the pianist uh, by night, lawyer by day, uh, have in fact uh, sung for their supper, which I occasionally have the pleasure of cooking for them. <laughs> in, in any event, so uh, perhaps because IP was a bit marginal, it was an area in which you could find women in numbers and so I had uh, many colleagues it, who were uh, at, of my generation or just a little ahead. Uh, you saw Pam Samuelson on the, on the, the video. She entered academia before I did, uh, and she tr is truly a leader, even if she disagrees with me 80% <laughs> of the time. Actually, I was thinking more like 95% of the time, but still it, it was a thrill to, to see her on, on the video. Um, but uh, with the mainstreaming of IP that uh, has followed on the economic significance of intellectual property to the American economy, a large part of that, of course, being uh, in the technology industries, there has, uh, along with that, come an increasing masculinization uh, of the IP sector, uh, both uh, in practice and in academia. And so I think that the work of CHIPS is all the more important uh, in encouraging women to persist and to advance in this very exciting field. Thank you so much.